Um, just to begin, really, as a kind of introduction, I'd just like to read out uh, the kind of core, as it were, that, that, that we kind of put out around this round table. And I know probably all of you have read it already, but I think it's a good thing just to kind of have in mind. And it begins with a quote from Rustin Baruccio, which says, uh, unavoidably, the production raises the question of ethics, not just the ethics of representation, which concerns the decontextualization of an ethic from its history and culture, but the ethics of interacting with people. In the process of creating the work itself, it is at the level of interactions that the human dimensions of interculturalism are at once most potent and problematic. I mean, interestingly, I think, um, when he talks about the production, of course, he's talking about Peter Brooks and Mahabharata mm. decades ago. Yet here we are finding that the production could equally uh, relate to the orphanage art. So it's been more than 20 years since Rustin Brucha offered his view from uh, India. And yet similar charges of the cultural imperialism have recently been levelled at the Royal Shakespeare Company uh, by British East Asian actors and academics as well, I should say. The RSC's production of the Orphan of Zhao, a 13th century Chinese play, attributed to Ji uh, Junxian, and sometimes referred to as the Chinese Hamlet, I don't know what people make of that term, <laughs> uh, requires a cast of 17, yet only three of the cast are British East Asian, two cast as puppeteers and a third as the maid. For more than 30 years, and I think uh, at least since the casting of Miss Saigon in 1990, if not long before that, uh, the lack of British East Asian representation in the performing arts has been critiqued and challenged. In his defense of the casting of the Orphan of Shell, the artistic director of the RSC, Gregory Duran, asserted that, and I quote, having absorbed something of Chinese conventions and dramatic idioms, we want to approach the play with a diverse cast and develop our own ways of telling this ancient story and thus explore its universality. So, I'm delighted to uh, uh, introduce uh, this panel. I'm not going to introduce them, but to introduce themselves in the best way. Um, my name is Dr. Ashley Thorpe. Uh, I'm a lecturer in theatre at the University of Reading, and I research into Chinese theatre and British Chinese theatre. Uh, my name is Anna Chen, I'm a writer, performer, poet, broadcaster, and I'm one of the uh, British East Asian artists, such as we are now known, who uh, fought this particular battle, although I think most of us in our own ways have been fighting these battles and moving back way back when. I'm Dr. Amanda Rogers, I'm a lecturer in human geography at Swansea University, and I do research on Asian American, British East Asian, and Singaporean theatres, and looking at the kind of interconnections between them. Um, I'm Dr. Brodick Chow, and I'm a lecturer in theatre studies at Brunel University. And my research um, is much more focused on labour and work in contemporary performance. Um, and what drew me to this was that um, I trained as an actor in Vancouver, where I'm from, and uh, and I originated the role of Tui in the Vancouver production of the Saigon. So when all of this came up about um, the Orphan of Zhao, it really resonated with my own experiences. Yeah, uh, uh, my name is Daniel York. Um, I, I'm an actor, um, filmmaker, writer, musician, all round troublemaker. Um, I, I, as, as an actor, I did actually work for the Royal Shakespeare Company once upon a time, as well as extensively with the Theatre Company and, and other places like the Royal Court and stuff. And, and I'm currently vice chair of the, the Equity Minority Ethnic Members Committee. And, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, can I begin by asking the panel uh, just kind of think about, I suppose, the contextualization of this particular project? Um, because for decades there's been intercultural work uh, in Chinese culture, theatre, drama and dance. And some of these projects have been initiated by East Asian actors or have included East Asian actors or British East Asian actors. Um, some have in a partial manner and sometimes they've been completely excluded. Um, so what is it that marks the Orphan of Zhao out as a kind of specifically problematic? I'll go first. Yeah, I'll go first again. Um, actually, I don't think it is particularly problematic. Um, I, I, I think it's been problematic whenever it's happened, and it's happened for a long time. Um, you know, going back, there's been a, there's been a number of um, uh, times when this has happened down down the years. Um, I remember I was just leaving drama school when when Miss Saigon was on. I remember the the, the protests outside the theatres. And uh, I, I was struck because it had just become kind of unacceptable for a white man to play Othello. 
and, and my, my then agent at the time, uh, we, we, we happened to be somewhere, they were showing news footage of people outside the, the, the theatre on Broadway. You know, not here, it didn't happen here. It was, you know, with, with placards and stuff, but and my, my agent sort of, it was in that ridiculous. Um, the ridiculous of people protesting about it, which I found quite interesting as a, as a kind of, you know, mixed race, East Asian actor, you know, who was just starting out. and, and it, it, it's always struck me that, that, that we, we, we're very much a kind of, um, <coughs> I think of us as a third class minority in this country. You, know? you, you can't black up, you, know? you can't really brown up anymore, you can yellow up. Even if they're not actually paying themselves yellow in the production, that's effectively what they're doing in my humble opinion. And, and there's been various, you know, um, I mean I think, I think around ten years ago that the young Vic did, 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 a, did a play called The Soul of Tin New Leaves Her Body. With, with, and they did actually kind of paint the eyelids. There was no East Asian in it at all. And I think it can't be more than four or five of us wrote letters about that. And, 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 and you know, there were various other ones as well. I think, I think what, what, what enabled us to kind of make a, a big deal about this particular one were a number of factors. I think the fact Facebook and Twitter kind of enabled us, it, it went viral basically, and people got involved from all over the world. And so it just shot and, it, and, 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 and also I think that the fact that it's the Royal Shakespeare Company makes it very high profile. The fact also that, that they, they are such a huge recipient of taxpayers' money, I think it's 15 million pounds a year, something like that, um, which, you know, is, is no small deal. We were able, you know, we're able to exploit that, obviously, which is our taxes going into this. And the fact that, you know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not a believer in royalty, but the fact they're called the Royal Shakespeare Company means effectively they belong to all of us as subjects of the realm, you know. And, 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 uh, so, you know, it, 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 it looks it looks extremely dodgy from that point of view, and I think all of that will enable us to, to, to kind of get on the thumb the tubs or whatever you want to get on the soapbox and, and, and do it. And it was amazing, the, the, the amount of support that came in, especially from America. I mean, quite, quite moving, actually. And, 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 but this is what we have to do from now on. We have to, we have to make a huge noise about it because there, there is this kind of idea amongst East Asian people that we're, we're quite passive and we're quite kind of, you know, we kind of let these things happen. And, 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 and if we continue doing that, that's what happened time and time again. You know, I really believe this. You know, to quote the Beastie Boys, you have to fight for your right to party. You really do in this world. And, and I hope there'll be more of this going forward. Um, I think what really kicked this off, because we have had, you know, Miss Saigon, we've had more light at the Arcola in the past, where, where some of us did, did kick up about that. And definitely it was the Twitter factor. And I think also what happened, because this, this particular battle had been going on for a while, I'd been vaguely aware of it, I knew that, that Dan was fighting this on Facebook, he was posting and stuff. I think the thing that got us was when we heard what we thought at first was the two dogs in the maid. <laughs> that was that was absolutely the final straw. You, three out of seventeen, and they are playing two dogs in the maid, and that that's what really caught fire, wasn't it? Um, so I um, the thing about the orphan of Zhao is that. I think there are deeper problems as well, because I don't actually think the problems would have been sorted even had two, two of the leading actors being played by East Asian people. It was just ignorant. It was Aladdin for the middle classes. It was incredible. There was a ninja in there, because our cultures are all the same. <laughs> we, we, we know this. And the most startling and stunning moment for me, where I thought race and class came together, mm. was the scene where the four ethnic actors, there was a, a, a young black woman in there as well, uh, as well as the two guys and the, the, uh, the woman playing the maid. So four of them were sort of on their knees, subdued in a line across the diagonal at the back of the stage. The three white actors playing the doctor, his wife, and the nobleman were flouncing around in very RSC mm. mode. And at that moment, I thought, you're going Dan. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I just I thought, this, this can't be allowed to stand. So on so many levels, and I think unless you look at the deeper class issues as well, I don't think you're going to sort out just, just the, the, the race ones. 
Um, I, I think, just to pick up, it's some of the stuff that's already been said, but just the reproduction for me of the stereotype of East Asians as passive was the most problematic thing, and as um, voiceless, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so did it? Did the maid ever speak? Is that she has one scene, and I can't count it up the pages. It's two and a bit pages, but where she um, is, is being interrogated about the, because they've heard the scream of a baby, so they suspect the baby has been born, and she very quickly doesn't say anything. She is passive all the time. Mm -hmm. She doesn't do anything. She, she, uh, her one action is that she declines to, to give up the, the mm -hmm. baby, but she does, not, she does not. None of the characters, the the, the Asian character, uh, um, char the characters played by Asian actors, push the plot forward. We are not in a protagonist or leading yeah. role. Mm -hmm. We are not the authors of our own culture of ourselves, our own history. So I think for me, the kind of reproduction of passivity within the actual form of the theater production itself, it's almost too convenient that mm -hmm. it seems that, well, you have a puppet, so it's mediating speech already. So there's, so, there's somebody, you're speaking through another object, and, and then the role of a maid being somebody who is subservient to the other characters. So that, that to me, was the most problematic um, aspect of it. And in, Comparison to, I suppose, other intercultural work, I just, I, I, I don't think in the past when we would think about the big problematic productions, for instance, or, or any of the people, <coughs> but Yoshi Oida's role within those, you know, productions, I don't think was ever so um, specifically uh, reproducing an image of a Japanese man as passive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think. Uh, the big thing about this production compared to the others is, A, it's the RSC, and there's a certain precedent, there's a certain standard, there's a certain international cachet that comes with that company and has the bar set higher, and therefore we should expect higher of them as well. And I think there's also an increasing engagement with China, which is driven by economics. And therefore, we are wanting to engage with China and understand it on a cultural level. But the problem is, is that this is being mediated by, in this instance, entirely white people, it would seem to my mind, apart from Ru Li, which I think, well, I think there's interesting questions to be asked about her role within that, and I would like to know more about that. And I know she talked about that on the opening night, but I'd like to find out more about that, because it does seem to be, it comes over, I think, this passive image, all of these things appear very white orientalist modes of representation within the play. Uh, one of the things I found out about the kind of process of putting things together, and I don't know how much this is in the public domain, was that um, the production team very early on actually went to America, and they went mm -hmm. to Michigan, and there was kind of a conference and a symposium about the play, um, and that uh, the production team received short workshops uh, by Chinese opera actors. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, there's this kind of sense that uh, the production team have been traveling the globe and kicking bits yes. up, um, and kind of bringing them together. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of wondered uh, to what extent uh, this production could be described as inherently imperialist, and what, if anything, could have been done to change it. I don't. I don't I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, where do you start? I mean, this, 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 was white, this was utterly white man stuff. It was yeah. just. I mean, they okay. They didn't uh, tape up their 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 eyes, although there was a very dodgy photo that I know Dan <laughs> took great pleasure in reproducing everywhere of the em emperor. And I don't know whether he was going... <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that actor as well. He's a lovely chap. Very good actor. But that was quite scary. I mean, because another thing that was happening is there's no subtext. I was quite shocked. The characters all say exactly what is needed to push the plot forward step by painstaking mechanical step. And so I think what they're saying is they're only when you say imperialist, they're, they're owning the culture and saying we don't have depth. Right? We have no sub subtext. We only say what 
what we, and I'm going into that. Did you see the trailer as well with that, that hex and as, 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 as well? So there, th this, is, this is operating on a lot of different levels. And I really think it's imperative that we engage with the RSC, not just to get more actors on stage, but I want them to know exactly what they are saying, to be able to hold up this, this snapshot of the, the four kowtowing um, eth ethnic uh, servants and, and the, th the three, three white main characters and, and show, show that to them. And they, culturally they were getting stuff wrong, like, um, it was very Confucian. It can't be the Chinese Hamlet, because in Hamlet you're exploring the depths of, of the human soul. How can you do that in a political system, which is what this is pushing, which is, it's all the bloodline. It's the son. This child, this child is so valuable as being the last of the clan, and the clan is a big subject in, in Chinese history, that the doctor is prepared, because of course we don't value our own lives and the lives of our, of, of our kith and kin. He hands over his own baby to be killed, and you hear the, the next snap of this Ming the Merciless uh, villain. <laughs> the Tuan Gu snaps the neck and, oh, it's a bit sad, but never mind, because the orphan must grow up in order to to, um, to avenge his family. Now, I don't think that mentality is actually, I think we have a lot more going for us than, than this. So there are all these assumptions. I think I've got, quite, I've got a lot to say about this because it's one of the things I picked up on with this idea that we were tripping round to China at taxpayers' expense yeah. and we were going for a week and I, and I read the blog. I mean, when you look at the RS, the RSC website is incredibly informative about the whole worldview regarding this production because um, it did feel like, oh, we're tripping. And I could imagine, like, I was going, oh, look at that piece of architecture, let's take a photo. Or let's look at this, let's take a photo. And going to the market and trying to barter people down. And I just, I really felt like it was a travel log. I mean, I teach kind of colonial and post-colonial geographies, and it felt like something, a travel log from the 19th century that I would show to my students and say, what would you, what would you say about power relationships inherent in this text? And it really felt like that. I think the costume designs, um, for me, were quite something else as well, the kind of terracotta warrior modeling. But also, for me, the facial hair within those signified really Asian, an Asian protagonist within those roles, or Asian features within those faces. Um, so even though you weren't yellow facing, there's a, perhaps one step from it. And I could almost see somebody going in the makeup room, oh, wouldn't it be good if we could just and I just thought, oh, you know, we're, we're, that, we're that close from it. Um, I have to say, I don't know whether we should say it is inherently imperialist, however, to do this kind of work. Because if you were to say, is this, then that would preclude white people, such as myself, from researching anything to do with China, India, anywhere else that I don't technically own or have any um, blood connection to. So I don't believe that you can call any kind of cross-cultural exchange inherently imperialist, but it's how you go about doing that. And in terms of, um, you were saying about justifying or rectifying this, and the idea that we are back from, you know, we're 20 years forward from Peter Brook and Maharata. And the thing about that production was that it generated such huge critical discourse around it. And since then, academics have pushed all of these things. We've explored intercultural exchange in huge and varied ways. Rosella's done it, Ashley's done it, in these really imaginative ways, really pushing <coughs> things forward. And yet, the theatre industry has not kept pace with academic developments. So I think there is an onus on us as academics as well to make sure that our work and our theories and our findings get filtered back. Because this pressure's on us too, because you know we have to be continually producing stuff that seems to be innovative, theoretically new. In, you know we have to be developing stuff all the time. So to go back and say, oh, we're back in Peterborough Orientalism, circa 1980. Someone say, oh, that's no, that's not new. We know that already. We're not going to publish that. So there's with these kinds of tensions within the kind of knowledge system about how we can educate theatres and work with them as well. That needs to be um, I think on the text itself, what is interesting to me, and I want to pick up on some of the things that Anna was saying, because this idea um, of, of bloodlines and um, you know that Confucian idea of everyone in this right place—that um, to me, uh, it's it's an, if it's represented as something that is other, then it's very very problematic, as if you know what 
look at these crazy ideas that these people over here have. But at the same time, you know, uh, I, my father always talks about Confucian ideas, and it's not like these things as uh, for for younger people or, or mixed people or, or people you know from the Chinese diaspora. It's not like these things don't matter. It's just that they matter and resonate in different ways. And if there's no, I suppose, with James Fenton's adaptation of the text, if there's no sort of understanding about what kind of prior knowledge the audience might bring to this, or what type of reception the audience is meant to have of these ideas, then um, then these ideas of balance don't actually mean what they're, I, I suppose, the, the great resonance that they could have as a text. Because I think that the text probably has a lot, of, a lot to say about um, uh, about Chinese history because it is part of our history. Um, so, so that to me is probably the most problematic part of it. It reminds me of um, of when they decided, uh, and it's cancelled now, but they were they were going to um, remake the movie Akira um, for uh, new. I think it's New Manhattan. So instead of Neo Tokyo, it would be New Manhattan. And as if that story of Akira and all of these, you know, this mutation and all these things that are that can be presented as look at these crazy ideas over here as if that can be put in a different context and understood in the same way it once you remove it um, from the context and not give any sort of indicators or signifiers as to how the audience should read it then it becomes incredibly problematic can I just follow on from that I mean think the thing about James Fenton's um, he wrote a piece in the Guardian about how he came to this mm -hmm. And I have some really uh, choice quotes from this <laughs> that I, I particularly take to. The play isn't written in verse, because originally it was, uh, but it's written in a poetic style that suggests the feudal psychology of early China. <laughs> 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 well, they, they thought in they verse. Thought, thought in verse. <laughs> and the, the second quote, um, this, I hope, is the imagined language of a fearsome, distant kingdom. Yes. <laughs> oh, and um, I think it's unfortunate because he was in, in this uh, piece. He's really trying to engage with it, and he gets, he does try and capture how he imagines this poetic kind of Chinese uh, songs and so on to, to be. And he actually gets confirmation from a, a Chinese academic or something that it sounds like something from the Book of Songs. Um, but it's almost like, I'm so pleased with this, and I, I'm really excited and I'm pleased with this, but on the other hand, again, it's this sense of, I have mastered this cultural yeah. domain. <laughs> so it's this this tension between, oh, I'm drawn to it, and I'm mastering it, and I understand it, but I don't really. It's all these kinds of things in operation. But, but can I say also, that, that, J, that James Fenton piece was a doozy, and, and it's, it's bullshit. And it's, it's bullshit because what it's doing, it's covering, at the core of this is a sensationalist piece about blood and sex. They make it very clear. That, so who's, who's actually seen it? Who here has actually seen it? I think you should go see it just as I can't for car crash theatre. So, <laughs> so, so um, it, it's the they establish very early on that the em emperor is a Nero-esque sort of he's a sexual degenerate, and it's, it's not just that he 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 shoots you know at whim um, members of the of, of the public with impunity. They keep emphasizing, you know, they don't show us, it's, it's tell, tell, don't show, that he is sexually degenerate. And the whole thing is infused with that. It's absolutely for the middle classes in, in the shires. And I apologize to anyone who is from the middle class in the shires. <laughs> 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 very, very nice. But <laughs> another moment for me was when they drop four heads to show how brutal they are. They, they, you know, four severed heads of the, the enemy of the Tuan Gu, the, the, the villain, the piece. They are the colour of Peking ducks that you see hanging up in restaurants. <laughs> now, I last saw this. This wasn't the first time I've seen this. The last time I saw it was um, Turin Dot by, who was the, um, oh God, what was his, his name, the, the director? Anyway, at ENO, where, where they have in the palace the, the evil, psychotic, murdering princesses, the kitchen. They have her dead lovers, the colour of Peking ducks, hanging up in the kitchen, a place of food. So I want to know subconsciously, what are these people like Greg Doran, and James Fenton must have seen this. I mean, he, I, I, I can't remember, I don't think he wrote this actually into, into the piece, but what are they saying about us? 
at the subconscious level, below the text, what are they saying? Yeah. Um, the, it, it's funny, you, you know, I, I was in Brett's tour in the Hampstead Theatre, and I was one of the princess's dead lovers, and, and my head was, I, I don't know the colour of people. <laughs> um, I, I also, my, my particular favourite photo, though, I have to say, was, was <laughs> one of the, 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 the orphan, um, uh, when he's grown up, obviously, and, and it's an actor, he's got his head shaved, and he's in this kind of gold kind of robe, and I looked at him, I thought, you're Britain. You know, <laughs> um, it's funny when I was reading this question this morning. I, I, I the word imperialist, I, I, cause, cause it's, it's a kind of word, you know, you always think you know what it means, you know, and, and we, we do. But I, I kind of stuck it in Google when this came up. It says the creation or maintenance of an unequal economic, cultural, and territorial relationship based on domination and subordination. Um, to, and to me, yeah, the, 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 this absolutely, the, it, 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 it's a classic kind of. Um, Colonial grab in a way. They they they, they kind of pillaged the goods, the goodies, and, and kind of locked us out of the process. Which is, and and it, it, it's sort of like the, the, this work, which is you know supposedly one of the greatest Chinese plays ever written, has been kind of um, appropriated uh, for, for 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 people in, in you know who are in a fairly exalted position. You know, leading RSC directors, leading RSC composers, leading RSC. RC actors, you know, they, 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 they get to have this stuff and, and to, to, to further their careers, you know, and, and obviously I'm not, it's not as, as, as kind of cold as that, they wanted to make something good, we all understand that, but, but that, that's very much the case, and the, the interesting thing is what, what Anna was saying about, about the, 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 the four minority, you, you know, well, the, the dog is made, it's, it's an equal opportunity dog, you know, there's two stages and a black girl. The, 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 the line of four bowing. <laughs> having, I have to tell you this, you know, having worked at the RSC, they're kind of laden with faux pas like mm -hmm. that. I, I was in a production there of, of, of um, Herman Melville's Moby Dick, which which which, which sank like a whale actually. I was, <laughs> it didn't do very well at all. But but there were there were nine of us in it, all men, and it was, it was a physical theatre production. So so and I'll talk about that in a minute. Naturally, you, you know, there, there there was me and there was three black actors in that company. We were the only people from any kind of background at all. And because uh, there were nine of us, at one point they put us in two, they put four, four in one dress and five in the other. And we were all in the dressing room, and we looked around, and we went, oh my god, they, they put all the minority ethnics around the Scotsman in the same but we <laughs> all, all the middle class public school boys were in the other dressing room together, um, <laughs> probably sitting pins. And, you know, they, they, you, you know and, and, and I, don't, I don't know if they, 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 they realize that they're, 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 they're doing that. Also, the, the kind of math physical work we had to do in that production. Um, I think the RSC hated that, but it cost them a fortune in physio speaks because we all, you know, we had to climb up ropes and stuff like that. And, and, and it, 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 it's like, I remember watching Wild Swans earlier this year, which did have an all new stadium cast, but, but how hard they were working on stage, <coughs> all these cement and everything. You always see this with minority ethnic actors. They, they you know, they, they have to be physical, they have to do, you know, they have to haul things around. And, and you sometimes see working class Caucasian actors doing that, but generally, the, you know, the kind of the privileged classical theatre acting elite, which is made up very much of, of, of public school educated, Oxbridge educated, white middle class boys and girls, get to kind of sit around in chaise longs and, and, and kind of be nuanced with text and stuff and, and look clever. <laughs> Whereas we have to work like, like dogs and men. <laughs> and, 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 and there, there, there's a clear class structure in the theatre, I have to say. and, and, and it's, it, to me, in many ways, it's the last bastion of that stuff. So, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can I ask, kind of, like, did you see any of this Chinese opera movement? Was that visibly noticeable? No, there was a photograph. We were we were expecting the worst because we saw the photograph of Ruru mm -hmm. do, doing that, yeah. and then they're all in the line doing. Yeah. Thank God. Now I don't know if it's because it's anything to do with us. <laughs> <laughs> we were waiting to count. Yeah. <laughs> that, that they. That they didn't, thank God. But I have noticed, you know, they were using the photograph of the Chinese kid on all their publicity. Mm -hmm. I've noticed now that they're, they're doing an offer um, for 40 quid. Have you noticed they've changed the photo? <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's the, the actual actor, because one of our complaints was, yeah, you haven't got the code of convictions, have you? You haven't got photos of the, the white guy playing the orphanage now. But now they have. <laughs> I think one of the things that 